Well, we never had a council meeting without some sort of technological. <laughs> it says it's now streaming live. Shall we begin? Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for the release of our fourth annual State of the Recycling Report. I'm Suzanne Jones. I'm executive director of EcoCycle. EcoCycle started Colorado's first recycling program some 44 years ago, and we are now one of the largest nonprofit recyclers in the country, working to innovate, implement, and advocate for zero-waste solutions across the country in order to foster a more sustainable, equitable, and climate-resilient future. We are pleased to be partnering with the Colorado Public Interest Research Group, also known as Coburg, and the release of today's report. Today's one of show, we'll start with me providing a brief overview of the state of recycling in Colorado, including announcing the top performing recycling cities in Colorado. We'll then hear from representatives of the winning communities, followed by remarks by our esteemed first gentleman, Marlon Reese. And after that, we're gonna open it up for press questions um, before Danny Katz of Coperd concludes the briefing. So everything we're talking about can be found in our report available at ECO's website at ecocycle.org. And we'll drop a link now into the chat box. And also, since we're gonna have time for press questions, we ask reporters to type in their questions into the question panel. So with that, let's get started. So as our 2020 State of the Recycling in Colorado report concludes, 2019 was a mixed bag. The bad news is that Colorado is recycling less and wasting more than the year before. Our state recycling rate is dropped to less than 16%, which is far below the national average of 35%. So we clearly have a lot more work to do here in Colorado to move our state forward. But the good news is we have cities that are leading the way and showing us how we can do this. And that's why we're here today to hear from our panel of leading cities. At the state level, there's also some good news in that the legislature and the governor have passed two important pieces of legislation. The Front Range Waste Enterprise Fund, which will provide funding oh. to communities to make significant strides towards higher diversion rates. And also the End Markets Incentive Bill to promote new businesses that use recycled materials in their products. And then the other good news is that our collective efforts are having a significant impact on reducing carbon emissions. Even though our state's recycling rate is only 16%, Colorado's recycling and composting efforts saved a lot of greenhouse gas emissions, the equivalent of taking 400,000 cars off the road each year. That's a great start. And as we grow our recycling economy, we'll see even more substantial reductions of climate pollution. And it reminds us that recycling isn't just about keeping um, materials out of landfills, it's a very important climate solution. So all the winning cities we have with us today are leaders in part because they provide residents with convenient curbside recycling service automatically as part of their trash service. The vision is very simple. Every Colorado resident that has curbside trash collection should also have a curbside recycling cart too. So it's one service with a bundled price with maximum convenience. But only 39 cities and towns do this in Colorado. And it's one of the most important actions we can take, particularly on the front range, in order to approve Colorado's waste diversion rate. The top cities we're gonna hear from in a, minute, in a minute have all had recycling for decades, but we're also really proud to feature Arvada as well because their recent efforts are gonna bring yet another city on board with convenient curbside recycling. So one last thought, recycling is only part of the solution. More than one third of what we landfill each year is food scraps, grass clippings, leaves, branches, and other organic materials. Composting this organic material instead and use it, using it to enhance soil health and the, the soil's ability to sequester carbon is a proven climate solution. So we are pleased to find that composting is growing around the state. It actually increased fivefold in the last 10 years. And we are excited to see the Colorado Department um, of Public Health and the Environment, CDPHE, working towards a statewide organics management plan to really drive new programs and infrastructure. So let's move forward now and focus on what's working at the local level and hear from our panel of winning cities. First up is Loveland, who for the fourth year in a row leads Colorado cities with 60% when it comes to residential recycling. Here to talk with us is Mayor Jackie Marsh. Mayor Marsh, we're so glad to have you. 
And we understand that Loveland has consistently had the highest household recycling rate in the state for years. And I understand that that's in no small part because you have volume-based pricing and convenient curbside service. So I was wondering if you can tell us about your successful program, what makes it successful and any other elements you care to share about it? Um, well, well, thank you for having us. And it, it's an honor to receive this reward. Um, you know, I think in, in general, Loveland people want to be part of the solution. I think our quality of life, we get that being responsible citizens uh, of, of the earth is important. I think our citizens buy into that, support um, reusing products. Um, taking things to our recycle center is easy for our residents. Uh, it was interesting when we had the COVID restrictions start. I can't tell you how many outraged emails I got from people that we had a temporary closure of our recycle center. So we make it easy by curbside. People can take things out to the curb. And then we also have a very um, accessible recycle center for the bigger things. And our people, our residents use it. And I'm, I'm really proud of our citizens that they support the recycle efforts. And I'm proud of our staff who make it so easy and convenient, friendly, helpful. So I, I think we're all in this together. We're, we're all people of the earth and we all need to take care of the earth. And I'm really proud of our staff and residents for supporting that. So, so thank you for recognizing us. <laughs> well, excellent Mayor Marsh. And we really appreciate you providing such a great model for other cities around the state. So appreciate that. Next up is Boulder which leads the state with a 51% re a citywide recycling rate for households and businesses, so combined. And we're pleased to have Mayor Sam Weaver with us this morning. Mayor Weaver, you guys are doing really well in Boulder, and um, we're happy to be a part of that at EcoCycle. Can you talk to us about why Boulder is successful and about your universal zero waste ordinance um, as a model for other cities in terms of bringing businesses into the recycling and composting um, the program. Great. Well, thanks so much, Suzanne. Thanks for having us here. It's much appreciated. It's a great event and great work that everyone's doing, Coperg as well as EcoCycle. Um, in 2015, Boulder adopted a new universal zero waste requirements. And, and what that has as components is all single family homeowners subscribe to waste hauling services that provide recycling and composting, and all property owners, including apartment buildings and HOAs, also are required to provide adequate recycling and composting to their facilities. And all businesses now are required to separate recyclables and compostables. Um, and one of the, the main things that has helped our measure um, be successful has been the educational aspect of it. So we have both EcoCycle and city staff who have reached out to businesses to help each different type of business understand how they can implement um, recycling and now composting. And so that educational outreach and the collaboration with our business community has really kind of taken us to the next level so that we have all of our businesses and all of our um, residents uh, participating. And so that gives kind of a full community um, <clears throat> outlook on how we uh, handle our waste. Another component that has really helped for us, we're a university community. And so when students move in, but especially when they move out, there's a lot of trash that's generated. And so we have a six day um, collection period that the university and the city and EcoCycle all participate in, which gives um, students who are moving out a way to be able to recycle and reuse um, the, Stuff that they're no longer going to need as university students. Um, and one of the things that you asked about <clears throat> was next steps. And I think we have two important next steps. Uh, one of them is countywide. Boulder County is looking at siting a composting facility right now. Much of the compost generated locally has to go a long way away, and we're trying to reduce that. So siting a composting facility is one of our next steps. And then um, our staff is looking at how we implement a circular economy approach so that there's a lot of reuse as part of all of this. So look at how we have implemented this uh, zero waste ordinance. You can go to https bouldercolorado.gov slash zero dash waste and you'll see what we're doing and how it's working. So thank you very much to everyone for having us. 
Well, thank you, Mayor Weaver. And it's really great what Boulder is doing also in terms of looking at a circular economy. And I know that cities around Colorado as well around the country are looking to see the steps that Boulder is going to take in that regard. So thanks so much for your thoughts on this. Next up is for Collins, who is the winner for having the highest industrial recycling rate in the state at 67%, which is amazing, as well as Fort Collins is also a model for comprehensive data tracking for waste and recycling in the city. So here to talk with us, I believe, is Councilwoman Susan Dutowski. Mm -hmm. And Councilwoman, I um, also understand you're updating your zero waste um, plan in conjunction with your climate action plan and moving them together under one umbrella, which I think is a wonderful way to proceed as well. So you can tell us about the success of your program and also how you're thinking about moving these programs together um, as one package. Mm -hmm. Happy to, uh, first of all, I wanna say how honored we are for being um, recognized for achievements in recycling, but along with all the other cities that are here today, that's, uh, that's amazing. We're on the same page and working toward good things. Um, and so um, Fort Collins has uh, a long history of environmental goals and, and actions. Uh, currently, we're updating three plans at once, um, the Road to Zero Waste Plan, Climate Action Plan, and uh, Energy Plan in an equity-centered planning process called Our Climate Future. Um, our Climate Future has um, proceeded with an intentionally different approach um, to updating planning documents. Um, the integration of updating three plans uh, in one process acknowledges the interconnections between waste, um, energy, and climate, and identifies uh, opportunities for um, connected solutions. Um, centering the planning process and strategies in equity uh, with community-defined priorities will result in increased buy-in um, to meet the goals while si simultaneously um, positively impacting um, other Fort Collins priorities. Um, with regard to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, industrial recycling, the city of Fort Collins um, has the Hoffman uh, Mill crushing facility, um, and it's an essential element in local industrial recycling. It recycles more concrete asphalt and soil than all the waste generated by all of the houses and businesses in Fort Collins. Um, Fort Collins also requires con, uh, construction, all construction sites uh, to recycle cardboard, metal, aggregates, and wood. Um, and this building code requires, requirement is an important uh, driver for industrial recycling. Um, in addition, Port Collins tracks residential, industrial, and commercial materials separately, and this helps us to see important trends with each sector. Well, excellent. I know that I, along with a bunch of colleagues from down here, have come up to tour your facility up in Fort Collins, and I think we would all like to replicate your industrial recycling yard uh, where you um, recycle all your aggregates and concrete and that that is a very impressive facility. So thank you for that as well. Uh, let us turn, you betcha. Um, let us turn to outside um, the Front Range and look at Greater Colorado because Greater Colorado is doing a lot of amazing stuff. And there is a two-way tie for best recycling program with both Durango and Aspen reporting 33%. And that's particularly impressive given the distance that a lot of the rural communities and mountain communities are from front range markets and processing facilities. So first up, let's hear from Mayor Tory from Aspen. Mayor, uh, there's a lot you could talk about, but um, in addition to talking about the success of your program, I'll just note that there's a lot of construction happening in a Roaring Fork Valley and elsewhere in the state and that construction waste is a growing part of our waste stream. And I know that you are taking actions along with your county, Pitkin County, and looking to reduce construction waste. So we'd love to hear from you about your program. And we can see you, Mayor, but we cannot hear you. I think you might be on mute. Um, let's see if we can help you. Um, Ari, is there anything we can do? Um, there you go. That, that yeah. looks like... That's it. All right. Did that Thank work? you, Mayor. 
All right. Yep. Once again, having a little bit of difficulty here on my computer this morning, but thank you so much. Thanks to Colorado Perg as well uh, for hosting this this today. Um, you know, I want to say thank you, of course, for the recognition of what we're doing, but more importantly, um, this is really a, a great reminder uh, as we get together as a group here to talk about our successes, to remind ourselves about how we need to be moving forward as well. Uh, your question was about uh, construction and demolition uh, and that waste and its impact on us, which is great. Um, it, you know, truly it is the largest uh, component of our landfill uh, materials that are going there. So, so this is something that we are tackling right now. Uh, we've had our county, Picking County has stepped ahead of us on this, uh, looking for countywide regulations. And the city right now is actually scheduled to have a work session coming up in just a few weeks where we'll be looking at 2021 for implementing some of those uh, uh, directives into the city as well. Uh, you know, our biggest challenge there is uh, been identified really as space. Uh, how do we get the materials deconstructed? Uh, how do we get the uh, construction materials that are going in to be separated uh, appropriately on site where we can? And then how do we get those uh, to the right facilities? So we do have our challenges out there, but that is truly the greatest impact that we can have. Uh, as, as we talk about the larger picture of uh, landfill and diversion, recycling, uh, truly you identified it. You know, our proximity uh, and the hauling distance that we have to deal with uh, does put a, a challenge to the costs therein. Uh, but not only that, I wanted to say that it, it does also uh, affect some of the belief in effectiveness. You know, truly we are still working with our community to uh, get that buy-in to move forward on all fronts. So whether it's recycling, composting, or uh, construction and demolition, uh, all, all these items are still needing to be tackled on a one-to-one -one basis and, and working with our community. Truly, that is also one of our greatest strengths. Our community is the one that drives forward these initiatives. Uh, then we're lucky to have local leadership that wants to forward those. And uh, I have to say, uh, we have just a tremendous staff, both the county and the city, uh, that are willing to do the footwork to get these implemented and make sure that they are integrated into our community. Once again, I want to thank you guys so much for uh, hosting this this morning. And, and it's great to hear the other tales and, and stories from the other cities involved here. Thank you. Well, thank you from Aspen. And I'll also note that Aspen was one of the first cities in the state of Colorado to put a fee on single use paper and plastic bags. And I know that um, that's been a success, I believe. Mayor, maybe you wanna to speak to that. I know a lot of other cities are watching what you're doing there. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I would say definitely a success. Uh, like any, any town that is trying to implement that bag restrictions, uh, there was some pushback at first, but it was quite amazing at um, not only the acceptance, but the compliance as well. Um, you know, we've successfully eliminated the plastic bags from our grocery stores and, the, and other outlets. Uh, we'd like to reinforce that going forward. Uh, right now, what we see is, is really uh, a challenge with the alternatives. What we'd like is for some more of those eco alternatives to be more available and cost effective for our community. And that's what we're going to put in some of our effort in this coming year, 2021. Um, I, I was really happy about the bag uh, ordinance that we put in place here. Uh, I was one of the, uh, at the time, uh, city councilors that was forwarding that. Uh, and like I said, you know, I remember that uh, very well. And working with the city staff, um, you know, at first who said, uh, I'm not sure that we can get this done here. Uh, and then it was a couple months of just working and researching and looking at how we're going to do that and implement it. Uh, I think that we have had great success. You know, we have a, a small fee on bags that is uh, remitted a little bit to those grocery outlets, uh, as well as that goes towards funding some more of our environmental initiatives here. And that's something that the community really did buy into. So uh, my thanks goes out to all those that are participants here. Wonderful. Thank you, Mayor Tory. Now let's turn to your counterpart in the winning category for best recycling city in greater Colorado and that's Durango. And I believe we have with us Durango Mayor Pro Tem Kim Baxter. And I'll just say Mayor Pro Tem um, that Durango provides uh, residential recycling and trash collection and also services some businesses. And most cities do not offer recycling uh, to businesses. Can you tell us why your city chose to do that and how you've made it successful in uh, reaching your 33% diversion rate. Uh-oh, wait a minute. 
we got to turn your mic on too. Hang on a second. You're on mute. There you go. I also want to say thank you to everyone who's participating in the support for making these kind of things happen. Um, our staff is, is very proactive in these areas. And if we did not have that driving force along with our community, because it takes the community effort to want to be participating in these things. We've, uh, we switched from one point in time from a kind of a separated recycling to a single stream with the exception of glass. And that made a huge difference in our ability to do recycling because the community, it was easy for them. They can throw it all in one um, bucket and, and we come pick it up. So I think that is part of the success that we have. We still have separate glass, which has to be dropped off at our recycling center. And if you have an inordinate amount of cardboard, you can also do that, which is um, very helpful too. So um, as you mentioned, our um, uh, residential recycling program is citywide, so everyone pays just like you do with your trash and they come pick it up. Um, and part of that, the reason why we're successful at that is because of our public outreach that was done. Staff did an excellent job of launching our single, single stream recycling program and putting billboards on the trucks and all the follow up that they do. So we've started commercial, as you mentioned, um, services. and. We also uh, have a significantly large commercial uh, organization that does commercial recycling in the city. Um, residential is required to be done by the city, whether we provide that through a um, contract with an outside contractor, which we don't at this time, we do it ourselves, but commercial is open to competition. So we've been very successful in bringing commercial groups on 10 to 12% increase a year. And I think that that's been a huge help in our diversion rate. Um, we also are very fortunate because um, Mayor Tory mentioned the distance to travel to drop us uh, um, recycling off at recycling centers and we have a great recycling partner in Albuquerque who continues to find viable markets for our, for our recycling plastics and that is, as we all know, recycling has changed. Um, China has not been accepting what they've been accepting before. So one of our biggest challenges in the United States is to figure out what to do with that plastic that our communities are so good at giving to us. So um, I think that's gonna be a big challenge in the future to figure out how we deal with that. Um, we also have about 20% of our waste stream that comes as a food product. And we don't have a municipal program to recycle that. However, we do have this amazing uh, local company who's doing private composting and they go to each and every um, person who signs up goes to their house and picks up their food compost uh, uh, recycling for them to compost it and they're at about 400 well greater than 400 customers now and that's growing so that's been an amazing um, addition to our recycling capabilities uh, we also our residential increase in recycling has increased about one or two percent a year so we're at about 33 percent right now and um, that's also fabulous i would love to see us um, start looking at uh, a green waste diversion. We have two programs, one in the fall and one in the spring that picks up green waste. And I'd love to see us do some composting efforts with that. One of our biggest challenges is we have a very small footprint for our recycle um, facility. So to add in the wonderful programs that like Fort Collins is talking about with the construction debris, I love to do it, but we're gonna have to figure out how to have more space to make those kind of things happen. So um, thank you all very much. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear them. Um, well, thank you, Mayor Potem. Uh, that's really helpful to hear how rural communities in particular are dealing with some of the challenges and making um, some really successful models for others to follow. And um, I just want to note that press um, members of the press should be typing in their questions into the um, whatever it is we're using the chat box. Um, and we will be getting to them shortly. We just have to hear from a few other speakers. Um, I would like to also note that in our report, we um, looked at counties and talked to counties and the two top counties in terms of waste diversion are Pitkin County at 38% and Boulder County close behind at 37%. And we really wanna highlight their work as well in both collecting all the data, but working with the cities within their jurisdictions to really up recycling and composting. So one last uh, finding I wanted to highlight is that our report found that only 39 out of 270 of Colorado cities and towns provide this curb, convenient curbside collections 
uh, for recycling that we've been talking about. And only three of the top biggest cities in the state do that. So we are particularly pleased to also have with us today Arvada, because they are the most recent um, city in Colorado and the seventh largest city in Colorado, um, who recently added curbside collections, uh, which I believe is going to come into effect later in the coming year. So without further ado, um, I believe we have Arvada Mayor Pro Tem Dot Miller with us. And first off, congratulations on your new recycling program. And can you tell us more about this initiative and how it came to be and the role of your sustainability advisory committee in helping to move the city forward? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones, and congratulations to all the award winners. You guys are fantastic. It is our sincere hope, the city of Arvada, that you have in 2022 a Most Improved Player Award. And so we could compete with that. Arvada is leading in many, many things. Recycling was not one of them. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about um, a tale of the power of a citizen survey. So back in 2010, Arvada talked about a single hauler and it was shot down with just incredible lightning uh, from the community. Council members got death threats. It was incredible. Um, fast forward to two years ago, we had a citizen survey. Actually, it was close to three years ago now. We had a citizen survey that came through and the citizens said that they wanted to see more recycling options and a one street, one truck mentality in the city. It didn't have to be one single hauler throughout the city, but one, one truck coming down my street. And um, we took a look at that and several council members said, you know what, if we're gonna survey our citizens and, and people in Arvada have heard me say this so many times, if we're gonna survey our citizens, we need to act on the responses. We can't just survey our citizens for lip service. And our citizens are saying quite clearly that they want more recycling options and a better system. So the Arvada Sustainability Committee came together and really championed this. They did a ton of research. I have to commend Randy Borman and his entire committee. The research, the data that they brought, they had booths out in the community collecting data. They were working with Speak Up Arvada to do more surveying, you know, because it took a second survey. You know, let's go more into depth on this. And the, and the community said, again, let's, let's, um, have some more recycling options. So then the conversation to ballot or not to ballot is the question. Do we put it on the ballot or not? So we did this um, in the beginning, the language was so clunky that we said, you know what, let's do the RFP. We can't even say that this is gonna save people money and that was everybody's big concern. So let's do an RFP. We did the RFP and the city team chose a, um, a hauler. And it was going to be one bin and recycling, two bins, recy trash and recycling at every home. HOAs could, could be separate because they have their own organized waste hauling. So fast forward and the community is out, you know, incredibly supportive on one hand and incredibly against another. This is where your elected official hat comes in and you've got some thick skin because it was incredible all the way through to the final Monday where the vote happened. So then we, we talked about putting it back on the ballot now that we knew the pricing, except the pricing doesn't stay if you go back to the ballot. Then the contract becomes null and void, you get a ballot initiative, and then you go out to an RFP again, well, then the trash hauler can charge more because now they know the citizens have just voted to implement it. So it really was controversial. And in the end, the Arvada Sustainability Committee, our team, the, the amount of work that the city team did to make sure that we had all of our I's dotted and T's crossed was phenomenal. I would highly recommend um, doing this in every city across the state. The community support was really incredible. It was a different message than in 2010. In 2010, Arvada is a, is a bigger city. It was too early. And now you have you people know and understand the importance of recycling a little bit better 10 years later. Um, so if there's anything that I could do to encourage um, elected officials to, to take a look and survey your community to see if that's something that they're interested in. I can tell you they probably are. And I can tell you it's hard and it's very time consuming and it's going to be worth every single minute that people spent on this. Thank you so much, Mayor Botem, for that um, explanation of how you got there. I think you're a wonderful model for others to follow. And it's true sometimes 
getting these programs in place is a little controversial, but generally speaking, everybody is thrilled once they are, and they save money, they get this service, uh, they're able to add recycling as well as trash, and they have fewer trucks on the road. So it's a win-win-win, plus all those materials go to create jobs. So thank you for that. Um, we, um, in the interest of time, I'll stop the questions of y'all right at the moment, but we're going to hear from a minute the uh, questions from the press. And um, so stay with us. Um, we have one more speaker, and that is First Gentleman Marlon Reese. And we are so pleased to have him with us. He's a recycling champion, um, bar none, and has been a great partner. And we'll note that in our report, we encourage everybody to pick up this report and look at it. There's a lot of great stuff in it. But one of the things it has in it is recommendations for the state. For example, like have the state lead by example, such as providing recycling and composting at all state facilities and pursuing compost for state construction and transportation projects and those sorts of things. And also this, uh, we've asked the state to help in accelerating investment in recycling markets and uh, bringing businesses in that remanufacture um, new products out of recycled materials. And also we talked earlier about a statewide organics management plan that's in the works and also looking how to transition um, to where the producers of all these products help to pay for the recycling of them. It's, it's a concept called extended producer responsibility. Um, so uh, Marlon, given all that we've heard today from all these leading cities on recycling, what are the next steps? the state will do on recycling, composting, and reducing waste? And, you know, what advice do you have for all of us? Uh, you know, well, uh, first of all, thank you uh, so, so kindly, Suzanne, for uh, the lovely introduction. Uh, I consider you a dear friend, of course. I, I also want to do a shout out to uh, Randy Mormon at uh, EcoCycle, with whom I'm in uh, weekly communication, uh, so that I can uh, get the facts out uh, about recycling and composting to the Colorado public. Uh, you know, I think at the state level, we sort of look at the, the whole map of the state and each city is a die on that map. And so uh, it's fair perhaps to say that the state's responsibility is uh, connecting the dots. Uh, and so uh, it goes without saying, I'm, I'm just very pleased to, uh, to work with EcoCycle, to work with Recycle Colorado. Uh, it's inspiring to hear from all of these great cities around our state uh, who are really uh, leading by example, uh, to borrow that, uh, that great expression. Uh, so uh, this is our, our state's second annual uh, Colorado Recycles Week. Uh, at the state level, uh, as I said, we look at uh, connecting the dots, um, removing barriers uh, to municipalities and uh, counties enacting their own ordinances that uh, allow them to advance uh, sustainable uh, living. Uh, and uh, I also, as a non-elected, non-appointed uh, person in the public eye, uh, consider it a responsibility to also tackle a lot of the misinformation that's out there uh, about recycling and composting. And uh, that takes a surprising amount of time. Uh, that said, this is an issue that's close to my heart. Uh, I think for all of us, the earth truly is our one and only home. Uh, so caring about our planet is a great deal more than just a best practice uh, to make part of our routine or good public policy for politicians to write and enact, uh, caring for our planet is necessary for life itself. Uh, we need clean air to breathe and fresh water to drink, and these are the most basic building blocks of life. Uh, so when I talk about recycling, why it's important, uh, I'm coming from a place of believing this work is essential to our own survival, uh, and even more accurately to the survival of all life on Earth. Uh, we can't ignore this work, and it's long since past the time when we could get away with doing nothing. Uh, many Coloradans will remember, uh, hopefully fondly, uh, last year's Colorado Recycles Week. Uh, the successes we celebrated and the great opportunities we talked about that uh, would, would springboard uh, our state into a position of national leadership 
uh, on issues concerning long-term environmental health and sustainability. Uh, and I'm delighted to say that uh, between then and now, uh, we've made great progress, uh, though, uh, Suzanne, as you mentioned, uh, we've declined uh, in terms of how much we're recycling and composting. Uh, but I'd like to, to point out a few things that we've been able to get done at the state level. Um, on December 16th of last year, Governor Polis uh, signed a new greening government executive order that updated and replaced the sustainability goalposts that were set forth in previous uh, executive orders. Uh, and among some of the newer, more ambitious goals uh, were commitments to uh, reduce Colorado State government's overall greenhouse gas emissions by a minimum of 10% by 2023, uh, replacing all current lighting in state buildings with energy efficient LEDs by 2022, and actively reducing energy consumption per square foot by at least 15% by 2023. Uh, this year, it's a joy to once again uh, recognize and honor many of our local municipalities for the excellence and innovation uh, with which they continue to prioritize recycling and composting. Uh, to our honored cities and counties who we've heard from, uh, your work is really a point of pride for our state, uh, and it's a blueprint uh, for the kind of positive change that will deliver a healthier planet to future generations. Uh, this year, we've seen firsthand uh, the impact, the very real impact of climate change right here in our home state of Colorado. Uh, we didn't break just one natural disaster record this year. Uh, extreme drought, uh, as all of us know, led to uh, the three most devastating wildfires in Colorado history. Uh, with longer dry spells and vast tracts of forest land uh, devastated by pine beetles, much of our state uh, has become a, a tinderbox. Uh, yet Colorado is home, as we all know and love, uh, to spectacular public lands uh, and rich biodiversity. Uh, if we want to protect these places for both ourselves and, and the animals that call them home, uh, future generations of Coloradans are counting on us uh, to take action. Uh, Sometimes I know it, it can feel like there's nothing we can do as individuals to help address the problem. Uh, and much of what we've been talking about is uh, manufacturer responsibility, uh, government level action. Uh, but, you know, I do think that recycling and pot, uh, composting uh, are two critical ways that each of us can step up for our planet. Uh, Colorado has long been a leader in tackling climate change. Uh, and in the last two years, we've made great strides in reducing our emissions and cleaning our air and water. Uh, I was proud earlier this year, thanks to the hard work of bill uh, sponsors, Senators Kevin Priola and Tammy Story, and representatives Lisa Cutter and Jenny Arndt, uh, and vision visionary organizations like uh, Recycle Colorado, EcoCycle, uh, Coperg and others, uh, Governor Polis signed into law Senate Bill 55, uh, which with broad, broad bipartisan support aims uh, at developing our end market economy uh, by attracting new businesses to Colorado to buy and use our recycled materials to make new products. Uh, it also requires the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment uh, to launch a public education campaign uh, to teach Coloradans how to become better recyclers. Uh, last year, CDPHE also launched the Front Range Waste Diversion Grant Program, which in its first grant cycle this fall, uh, awarded over $2 million uh, to develop and expand uh, recycling and composting programs across the Front Range. Uh, but we know there's still a lot of work ahead. Uh, particularly when it comes to composting and recycling. We actually recycled, uh, sadly, less in 2019 than we did in 2018. Uh, our state statewide recycling rate dropped to 15.9% down from 17.2% in 2018. Uh, we know that the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is not helping. Uh, there's a lot of 
uh, new material out there, a lot of uh, single use items that uh, we're having to deal with. Uh, and, and so that, of course, is a contributing factor. Uh, Despite this overall decline, though, in 2019, Colorado's recycling and composting efforts did succeed, as, as Suzanne mentioned, in stopping more than 1.9 million metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions from entering our atmosphere. Uh, for perspective, and I won't, uh, I won't get too far into it because Suzanne, you, you already mentioned this, but, but that's the equivalent of removing 400 thousand cars from our roads. Uh, and if Coloradans recycled and composted just 10% more, uh, we could cut down carbon emissions by an additional 160,000 metric tons per year. That's the equivalent of another 34,000 cars off the road. Uh, these numbers are great for Colorado's environment, uh, for our people and our animals, but our state currently recycles and composts less than 16% uh, of uh, municipal waste every year. Uh, and unbelievably, uh, that's way, way lower than the national average, which is 35%. Uh, and we had set a, a statewide goal of 28% by 2021. So we're, uh, we're really behind. Uh, with all that said, uh, because of everyone on this, uh, this Zoom session, because of our people, I know we can start moving uh, those numbers in the right direction. Uh, one of my favorite films uh, that I assume everyone has seen is uh, Field of Dreams uh, from 1989. And uh, you will remember the, uh, the most memorable line perhaps from that film was, if you build it, they will come. Uh, so the more accessible that we make recycling, the more Coloradans will recycle. And the more Coloradans that recycle, the more businesses will move to Colorado uh, to buy and sell our recycled material. Uh, so many communities in our state are doing just that, including the ones we've heard from today. Uh, but we need to uh, take even more action and make more options available. Uh, recycling isn't just good for our environment. Uh, it's really, really good for our economy. Uh, it actually creates nine times more jobs than landfills do. Uh, the report that EcoCycle and Coperg released today says that recycling, reusing, and remanufacturing already generates over $8.7 billion in economic benefits in Colorado every year, even with our low recycling rate. So, you can imagine what that number could be if we really embrace these practices. Uh, the climate events we're seeing around the world uh, and here in Colorado certainly are no, uh, they're no longer random blips on a screen. Uh, there is clear and, and uh, many would argue deeply unsettling patterns to find. Uh, so we need to match the loftiness of our rhetoric with action on a grand scale. Uh, one of the governor's top priorities uh, has been to reach 100% renewable energy in Colorado by 2040. Uh, I'm proud of the work our state is doing and each of us has an opportunity to step up and do better. Uh, we can all do more to make recycling and composting second nature in the course of our our day to day lives. Uh, and I really uh, in closing what I'd like to say is uh, I get questions pretty much every day from people uh, from all 64 counties of Colorado, and they want recycling and they want composting, but they don't know how to get it. And uh, I want to sort of end on the note that if, if this is something that matters to you, if you believe as I do, as those of us on the call do, that uh, recycling and composting is are essential tools in the fight against climate change, uh, please uh, let your city council members know, let your county commissioners know, uh, continue to write to our legislators at the state capitol, uh, continue writing to me uh, in the governor's office. Uh, I, I think that uh, we're well on our way to uh, taking a leadership position uh, in, in uh, sustainability across our country and, and indeed the world. And uh, so I'll, I'll just say happy Colorado Recycles Week.
Excellent. Thank you so much, first gentlemen. Uh, I really appreciate you making the connection between zero waste and climate and how zero waste is such an important solution and all the great things that you're doing, um, both personally and as a member of the state government um, to help uh, lift up this issue. So with that, um, we're going to turn to questions from the press. And again, if you would please type in in the Q&A box if you have questions. Um, I'm going to also note that Danny Katz, who's the director of Coburg, and Kate Bailey from EcoCycle, who write this report or did write this report uh, with a little bit of help from others, but uh, lead author um, will be also on hand to answer questions as well. So with that, let me look. Um, I know we have one question, and this is directed to any of you local elected officials, and that is... Um, well, there was one earlier that talked about how COVID is um, having quite an impact on local government budgets. And for cities that don't have curbside, um, don't have business recycling, and don't even have drop-off facilities, how would you go about convincing them that that is a cost-effective and good thing to do um, for their cities or towns? And I'd open it up to any of the, the local elected officials if you want to give advice to those um, colleagues of yours in other places. Anybody want to jump in with some thoughts on that? Sure, Sam, I'll jump in. <clears throat> you know, I think we heard this from a couple of the other local electeds that it's the grassroots that really helps make the case to the city council and to the county commissioners. So uh, from a dollars and cents perspective, um, you know, there's always the uh, opportunity to make more money by offering more value for the haulers because they're offering uh, recycling and composting. So when you require it, so if there's an ordinance that requires um, that every hauler offer composting and recycling services, they typically charge a little more. So it's a little bit more, but not much. But the reason why people are willing to pay that extra money is because they want the service. Like I think coming from the grassroots, inspiring the conversation in front of council, you'll raise that resistance, but you also raise all the people um, talking about the relationship that the first gentleman said between the natural world and preserving the natural world and composting and recycling. So I really think the grassroots is where it starts. And I think, you know, there's more to value than just money and showing the cost benefits to the entire community is a great way to go forward. Yeah, this is Danny. I, that really Thank resonates you. with me partly because of the story we heard from Arvada at the beginning of the process and the story we heard from Loveland at the end of the process. You know, Loveland Mayor Marsh was describing people being upset when their recycling was being scaled back. Um, you know, I think hearing the, the stories of, you know, that, that grassroots can really be there for you when you have these services set up because they come to expect it for sure. And as Thank Mayor Weaver pointed out, there's definitely economies of scale when you include recycling for all of the, the community. So many of the cities on this call have actually really great pricing for their trash and recycling because everyone has that program. Um, so that's something to consider with organized hauling. And then one thing I'll just add also is that at a statewide level, we are watching Oregon, Washington, a number of the Northeast states looking to, to share some of these costs of recycling with the producers of the packaging and products. So that this isn't something that should be a burden on municipal uh, government budgets. This is something that uh, we need to take more responsibility for the, the companies that are making these products and the impacts that they're having and how do we uh, how do we have those companies invest in recycling and seeing a lot of that policy develop across the country and looking to have that conversation here in Colorado in the coming year or so. I see we have another question, but did any other um, representatives um, from another city and town want to add in? Okay, the next question comes from Scott Harrison at KRDO TV in Colorado Springs. And he notes that Southern Colorado isn't represented in this panel and wanted somebody to talk about what Colorado Springs and Pueblo and other Southern areas are or aren't doing in terms of recycling. I guess I'll, I'll turn that over to Kate. Do you wanna to speak to that? I would love if, uh, uh... Council member Baxter would love to speak to that as a, a Southern Colorado Southwestern, but um, I think you face a lot of the same rural challenges that, that Southeastern Colorado does. 
Yes, I would agree with that. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I was just listening to the conversation about having independent haulers and uh, in Durango, we don't do that. We do that as a city. And I think this kind of speaks to the first question too about the investment. Um, we are competitive with outside uh, providers at this point, which is why we're able to do it internally. And, you know, that may change as we do research. And um, like I said before, we're very fortunate to have an Albuquerque team that finds places for our recycling to go. If and when that goes away, I'm not certain what we'll do. So there are some very significant challenges to, um, to the first gentleman's comment about getting those industries in Colorado that can use those products and recycle them or reuse them or create a market for them, and creating jobs. Um, I think that would be tremendous. And yes, one we thing, also are in Colorado. <laughs> one thing that does seem to stick out when you look at cities in Southern Colorado is fewer of them do pro ensure that every household gets that curbside recycling um, service. And that is such a basic um, uh, uh, action to take if you want to improve the recycling rates of the community. Sure, and to speak to that just a little bit, um, because Durango is is our urban center, if you will. So we are more like like a front range city in that sense. Then, if you look at a broader community that's um, uh, smaller, and there are people live further outside from the central core, where I used to live at one point in time, and the challenge is um, affordability too. So one of the big challenges for us in all the sustainability programs we're doing, whether it be energy or it be waste, um, is how do we continue to have an affordable community so that the impacts of the cost of these programs don't create issues for our residents. And I believe that that can be part of it too because people can, People get used to hauling their own trash to the dump and they don't want to pay $10 a month or whatever it is to do it. So we have to figure out how to make it affordable also. All right, thank you for that. Um, we have a question from the Daily Camera, which is, why do you think Coloradans recycled less in 2019? And what are, what's EcoCycle and others going to do to reverse that trend? Kate, why don't you start? Yeah, I'll take that one. Great question. We've been asking ourselves that since the new state data came out. And I guess I'd want to emphasize um, our recycling did decline slightly, but more it's that our waste went up. Um, we, we produced, uh, I believe it was um, 6 million more pounds, or no, we just produced more waste in, in 2019 overall. Um, and so that's something we need to change. We need both our recycling to increase and we need our waste to go down. And when we look at what's happening across the state, the front range is where really where we need to concentrate. So our front range produces 87% of the waste across the state. Um, it went up 5% last year, even though population only went up over just over 1%. So our, our waste generation is outpacing population growth. So we need to get that under control. And the great thing is that we have these cities leading by example. We also have two really important state policies that just came into effect. The Front Range Waste Diversion Fund is giving out uh, grant funding. It's going to be over $100 million over 10 years to help Front Range uh, municipalities, haulers, schools, general, general communities move forward. So we have yet to see the effects of that, but we're really excited that to that use that as a really effective tool. Um, we're also looking to increase the number of businesses who come to Colorado who use our recycled material. And so you've heard a lot on this call about affordability for recycling. And the key to that is to stop shipping it across the country and start using it more locally to make new products as, as we can compost it into great new soil amendments. All of that can be done locally here in Colorado, reducing our shipping costs, boosting our local economy and increasing our recycling rate and lowering our climate footprint. So those are two big uh, pieces that we've put into place that we think are going to, to really help us scale up over time. Excellent, well, we are Coming to a close, I know that folks probably have to move on. Let me hand it over to Danny Katz of Coperg to um, bring it all together and take us home. Thank you. Yeah. So Danny Katz and the 
I'm the director of Coperg, and again, it, while it's disappointing that we've produced more waste in 2019, it's really exciting to see so many of these cities around the state that are demonstrating how much of that waste can be diverted away from landfills that can be recycled and can be composted. I want to thank, again, the leading cities that we're recognizing this year, Loveland, Fort Collins, Boulder, Durango, and Aspen. We're excited to see Arvada rising up as well and, and taking those big steps to improve their recycling. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the most basic thing cities and counties can be doing is ensuring everyone has that curbside recycling service, adding in the curbside composting service, expanding those services to businesses and some multifamily units. That's so critical. We heard a lot about some of the state actions that are going to be necessary as well. And we already know two really important ones are already in place. And we should be seeing some progress on those in the next couple of years. That waste diversion, the front range waste diversion fee and the business development work that we're doing in Colorado as well. So I think we're really poised to be turning this around. And it's certainly an urgent time because um, recycling, composting, this is a critical tool to tackle climate change. And it's a critical tool to create a circular economy, an economy that's much better for all of us and for the planet. So we're really excited. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And you can find our report at that EcoCycle link. Um, and if you want to talk to any of us afterwards, we're happy to talk with you. So thank you, everybody, for, for joining us today. And keep up the good work to all our cities. Thank you so much. Thanks for the recognition. Thank you. you betcha. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.